Persons under 18 will not be admitted. this experience more enjoyable for everyone. We hope you'll refrain from crying during the show. Enjoy the movie. Thank you. Everyone thinks because you're a zombie you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. We have very active lifestyles. It's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists. And we all love a good cup of joe. And there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds Coffee is my guilty pleasure. Bold, robust, delicious. It's coffee that can wake the dead. <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds Coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey, hey, happy Wednesday, everybody. You're watching Still Token With. My name is Leo. I'm the monkey behind the keyboard here. And uh, as always, the magical Benjamin. How's it going? It's going well. If my, if my camera would stop for it. Oh, there it goes. See, it stopped. I just not had to say it had to you. stop. What's not that? It's not the camera. It's you. Hey. <laughs> hey. Listen. Him Monkey. and Bigfoot both come in fuzzy. I hear voices. Me too. Where are those voices coming from? Uh, you, you know, uh, Bigfoot, there's a theory around that. Like, he's... he's uh, Baby Sasquatch. Or... Distorted looking. Yeah, yeah. He's blurry. Hey, everybody, it's me. I'm I'm not I'm not the other guy. Uh, uh, I can see how this is going to go, Benjamin. Why don't you introduce our awesome guest? Uh, honestly, I don't think she needs an introduction, but we will introduce her. So uh, this amazing woman has basically won wore all the hats that you could possibly wear in this industry. For real. I, I mean, like I was blown away when I looked at. All her credentials, but let's welcome Miss Tawny McClure. Did I say yeah. it right? You did say it right, Tawny. Uh, yes. if, okay. if, if, if Jeff was here, he would have said McClure or something. <laughs> he, he likes to do. He likes to mess with our guests. <laughs> well, hi, you guys. I'm really grateful to be on the show. We're, We're not worthy. We're not worthy. worthy. <laughs> yes, you are. I, I have to tell everybody I'm in Kauai right now. I'm on vacation wow. with a bathing suit, and later I'll show you my view. But I'm having a good old time. Between all the other 
working jobs that you say I do because I do, you know, producing and directing and all kinds of crazy stuff. But, and that's just a little yeah. tiny bit of what she does, folks. And we're going to uh, hopefully we'll have enough time tonight to get into a good portion of all of it. I just must have ADHD or something. <laughs> I'm just going to. Well, I, I did some background research and both For your what? parents, both your parents were amazing people. Your grandmother. I mean, this kind of just, it just fit. <laughs> all, all aspects of it just fit. It was like all the stars aligned. I mean, and you're in Hawaii right now, so I'm just not even, I don't even want to talk to you anymore. I'm jealous. <laughs> We're preparing for winter. Right? Like, well, I know it's really hot here right now. But yeah, giving yeah, sacrifices to the volcano great. gods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great to be here, though, really. I'm actually part Hawaiian, I'd say so. Really? Yes. You, you didn't know that, Jar Jar, and you did your I, research? Well, I have to say, like, when you brought up her grandmother, I was like, oh, crap, I didn't go back that far. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> hold on. Like, no, usually, well, like, I'm, I'm I, just I, I, real quick ahead, to touch, real quick to touch on her. Her mother um, was Hawaiian and Polynesian descent, uh, and she was a singer. Yeah. Now, her grandmother was a gifted opera singer. <laughs> Correct. You guys know me better than I know me. Yes. You know, a brush. Uh, what may almost when she was younger but um, yeah she was an opera singer and we had when i was growing up in hawaii she had this beautiful grand piano in the living room and she'd sing and play and i play a little bit but i wasn't very good on the piano actually but she got me started in singing and you know my father being an actor mm -hmm. i don't think i really knew anything else to do but something in the entertainment industry i never you know other than maybe writing because i started writing wanting to write as well well, since you brought up your dad, can, can we get one? I, like, you must have hung out with some big names, like huge. That oh my god, uh, can we get one crazy dad used to have so and so over, and he would let me ride on his lap as a horsey, and like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, there's got to be something um, crazy. Like, well, my oh, dad's my dad's best friends you know my unfortunately my dad passed away at when he was 59 but i was obviously very close to him and when we lived in encino california um we he had a lot of you know big name friends and i remember when i was really little and this is making me old i am old um oh, we would go actually to watch frank sinatra in in their concerts my dad actually dated nancy sinatra for a while um and then we had let's see oh my gosh um, James Jury, uh, Clint Eastwood. Mm, uh, God, I, I could just go on. I mean, my dad. My dad had a lot of friends, and he was a really. I can brag. He was very well liked. That's pretty dope. <laughs> he was a good, yeah. yeah. Do you feel really better now, it. Jeremy? Oh, uh -huh. dude, I'm telling you, like, uh, like there's so many as a geek, a nerd, a dork. I don't know what anybody wants to call me, like. You, your your family, as Ben brought up, I didn't even know about your grandmother. Like, that's impressive. Like, you guys are, like, just, like, the, the whole legends. shebang. Legends. The whole shebang. Very sweet. Like, that's very sweet. The whole I, shebang. Well, yeah, definitely. I don't know. I just, like I say, I grew up being in the industry, and that's what yeah, I yeah. knew how to do. And, and then, you know, one thing led to another. It just... Um, you know, that's kind of what you do, you know. Yeah, and I, oh my also horses too, because my yeah. father was actually a real cowboy. He actually was a buckaroo in Nevada when he was in his teens and broke and cattle and did all that kind of stuff. So when I was really young, um, I started riding from when I was like five years old up, you know, riding horses. Sorry if there's noise in the background, but um oh, no worries. Um, but uh yeah, and so uh, you know, you just follow your parents, I guess. Or follow what you like. Right. Did, did you ask him to be on the Virginian or was was uh, <laughs> something he was just like, hey, let's throw my daughter into this? And like, oh, this I, think it was, honestly, I think it was my mom. I think she oh, was it? do a part on the Virginian. Um, cool. Yeah. So I did that. I saw the episode is Small Parades. I was, yeah. I almost forgot. You know, it's been so long. I was a little kid. <laughs> I'm, I'm sad you're not at your house doing this because, like, I, I was ready for for the the whole uh, 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 show and tell kind of thing. You oh, got, really? Like, yeah, you got like tons of. I, I watched a ton of interviews with you, and and like you you have like history in your house. Yeah, that's kind of true. I, I I have a lot of my dad's things and different stuff. That I 
and your own things. Yeah. Like, like, uh, let, let's hear about going to Germany and opening for Linda Ronstadt. Like, <laughs> oh my God. I love that you know that. I love it. The only thing that's a little bit weird about my career is my maiden name is McClure, right? Um, and then when, uh, I'm going to get to Linda Ronstadt in a second, but and then when I married Jonathan Kane, um, he wasn't in Journey at the time. I'll get to that too. Um, he was in a group called The Babies. To make a super long story short, he wanted me to change my name to Kane. I actually didn't. I wanted to stay McClure, but mm -hmm. he wanted me to, and I was, you know, okay. So the problem with my career, a lot of people don't realize that Tawny Kane is Tawny McClure, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I, I'm grateful that you recognize Tawny Kane because at one point in my life, I kind of felt like my singing career like disappeared because right. of, like nobody even knew that I was a singer. Um, but yeah, a really good one. But mind yeah. you. I listened yeah. to your full album, uh, your your self title album today. Like, I really, like, I, I really only had five five hours to prepare for this, so I, I jammed packed everything into my brain that I could. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I opened for Linda Ronstadt in Germany. And that was pretty darn amazing. Um, I also opened for um, Eddie Money for quite a mm -hmm. while and Greg Kinn and um, <laughs> funny, Jefferson Starship. Yeah. And, <laughs> wow. uh, you uh, geeked out for that one. I did, right. And so, um, yeah, I did. Um, very slick. And I'm, oh, here's a story. Okay, quickly, a quick story about music. Okay, mm -hmm. so I'm opening for Grace Lick, blah, 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 you know, uh, Jefferson Starship in Las Vegas. This is a long time ago. Um, and I talk about geeking out. I'm such a fan of Grace Lick. So I go, I see her backstage and I walk up to her and I go, oh my God, I'm such a fan. I'm such a fan. I've been a fan of yours since I was a little kid. And she looked at me and she went, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, and I'm like, what? Because I was, you know, she's like, make me feel old, you know. But yeah, yeah. 21, something. like, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> I totally geeked out. It was very I, I do well, that well, myself. Well, what? No, I was just going to say, you know who else geeked out? Who? Well, actually, everybody that's going to geek out seeing you at LA HorrorCon October 1st and 2nd. Yeah. That's you, right. Man, we better promote the LA HorrorCon or. Right. I'm bad and i i'm ex oh speaking of geeking out la HorrorCon is i'm actually really excited have you guys seen the celebrity list it's like have i'm not you did i'm not, I'm not leo worried. can probably pull it up though i will leo has magic oh fingers God. over there there it's unbelievable yeah they've got some classic horror people and i'm lucky to have done a few horror more than a few horror movies so i get to slide in there right <clears throat> Like Crawl Space with Klaus Kinski, if you're into that kind of, you know, horror genre from way back when. Death Spa, Death House. And my movie Trance, that's now released on, on Amazon. Amazon. It's listed as, I, I, it needs to be listed as a horror because it actually gets very horrific as the movie progresses. There's a lot of horror and scary stuff. But, um, so yeah, so that's what, a good Halloween movie. What's the, the synopsis there? Well, it's actually about magic. It's about my character's quest for real magic. And in the story, um, which I co-wrote, but um, is about, it's very quirky. I cannot tell a lie. The movie's quirky, weird. If you like that kind of stuff, where you're kind of going, what in the heck? Then I like you're that. The movie. <laughs> but um, she's trying to, to find out if real magic, true magic really does exist. I don't mean like pretend magic cards. I mean like, um, so... In the story, her grandfather was a famous magician, and supposedly he could actually levitate for real. And I don't want to tell you too much more, but my character tries to find out if it's actually real, and she starts getting attracted to this magician played by Bruce Abbott. But there's a problem. She's married to a mafia guy Oh, geez. by Martin Cole <laughs> from Cobra Kai and Body Kid. And so there's instant conflict between Bruce Abbott's character, played, he's like, plays a magician, Taylor Black, and Robert Leone, played by Martin Cove. And I'm in the middle, <laughs> <laughs> causing all kinds of trouble. So that's, you know, no. that's a yes. No. yes. And actually, there's a scene where I, where I, woo, I levitate up into the desert. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you, how how is your chemistry with uh, Mr. Cobra Kai? 
Oh God, I love him. He actually, to be honest, if you going to check me on IMDb, he and I, we've actually done a few movies together, mostly oh, all low budget, you know, trance was low budget too. Um, but he's so fun to work with. Great guy. And you know what, honestly, I'm, I want to almost tout him more than myself for trance because I think his performance is funny, quirky, whacked. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's good. Like I say, the movie's got, it's quirky, twisty, you know, it's got a comedic edge and it's got to see it. So, so there you go, folks. You got to go see it. It's on Amazon. It. Yeah, Great. it's really easy. We all um, have Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, the whole world has Amazon at this point, right? Yeah, yeah, you just kind of scroll around and go, oh, that's the one right there. Yeah. yeah. And then watch it. Yeah. yeah. Just think so, you're going to be in a trance. So trance, bam. It's all, it all works out. Yeah. yeah. And I'm ex like, again, I, I, I'm excited to, about the Horicon because uh, I'll probably be geeking out trying to meet some people myself. And then because I produce, there you go. <laughs> Owen. Oh. oh. Wow, well, thank you, Romello. Oh, I thank you so much. Yes, Trance is also on Vimeo On Demand. It is on, on Netflix. Look at you. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that. I, I enjoyed playing the role. Um, you know. Romello stealing our thunder. I <laughs> it's, that's, um, what, that's why we do this live, so that people that would never get a chance to interact with such amazing guests have a chance to interact with amazing guests. Well, well well, this actually should prepare you for HorrorCon, though, because we, we've run a lot of panels. I don't know if you have to do a panel at the con, but uh, the guests are a little scared to – or not the guests. The, the, the fans are usually a little scared to start answering the questions or asking Ask questions. questions. But as soon as, like, the funnel opens, it kind of just <laughs> cascades. It's awesome. And Leo, yeah. go, Leo, I know Jeremy keeps cutting you off, but you I'm do realize sorry. you do realize you have the power. I, 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 I do. Yes, I know. Uh, <laughs> That's the mute button. Well, the thing was uh, I, I interrupt, interrupted him big time last time and we didn't get a chance to go back. I don't know what you're going to say. I oh, I don't know either. I, it, she's <laughs> talking about ADHD. I'm like ADD. We central, both have ADHD. Yeah. I can already. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. I saw that Jack you of all up. trades. I saw that you did have the list for. Uh, oh, I yes. look at that. Look at all those celebrities, for sure. Well, yeah, just scroll it. It's on. There are really some really great people. Oh, oh Jan Birch. Yeah. He, he's he's been on. They have it in alphabetical order, so you're going to be all in the B's, and and then yeah, you can. Just oh, scroll there's through. what's his name from uh, Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. Right. There's some really good. Stars. Actually. He was so you're going to get us a few um, autographs while you're there, okay? I'm just yes. writing down names <laughs> yes. right now. He was the son of An Sons of Anarchy, but he was also in um, Too Fast, Too Furious. He played the cop when they put the bucket on his stomach. Yeah. <laughs> See? <That's... laughs> I'm just saying. Well, look, that he, he, um, it's Patrick, yeah. He's wow. Look at that. He's so, folks, I mean, the, all this amazing talent, Plus Tawny there. I mean, you gotta go. L.A. Horrorcon. L.A. Horrorcon. She so might even wear a bikini because it's. Well, LA. I'm only. Gonna, I'm not gonna wear a bikini at the L.A. Horrorcon. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna be as warm as Hawaii. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> but I'm super excited about the L.A. Horrorcon. I really. That's am. really it's, cool. And it's at the Los Angeles Convention Center. I hope I'm right when I just said that. So um, correct me if I'm wrong. But um, you're on camera. Hey, <laughs> sexy. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the um. So this is an. How come you're not family. in your bathing suit, buddy? Yeah, well, well, they are. <laughs> my husband's family's reunion. That's what it is, and there's like 17 of us, and um, that's why we're here. So it's nice. not really all awesome. about me, actually. It's about that's them. fantastic. That is amazing. What? Family, what? So, family's what it's all about. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, why would you do all this if you don't have somebody to share it with and have like, right? memories exactly. and to, to be like, guess what I did today? <laughs> like, I, I got to brag about who I was going to speak to tonight. To even the, the kids in the house even knew who you were because Legally Blonde. Oh, like, yeah. Right? Blonde. Oh, yeah. They were all about it. They're like, oh, my God, we know her. I was like, I, I had know. A great <laughs> of, uh, filming that. It's funny, too, because 
I don't have the largest role on the planet on that, but it's a very, it's memorable. I played Reese with, with and it family. reoccurred. So and yeah, and everybody you know talks about it. They love the character and everything like that. So and it's kind of one of those things you do. Of all the movies, you do one little you know comedy, and everybody remembers you from from that one, which is really great. While they're all doing all kinds of, I'm gonna show you guys something. Here we go. I am going to say this. I see nothing but men going behind her to the refrigerator. Yeah, it's all men. <laughs> it's, it, that's where all the beer is. Yes. Do you guys see that? Oh, my God. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? That is just this gorgeous. Is not fair. I know, right? Gorgeous. That is fantastic. Yeah. Okay. In the best weather in the world, it looks like right now. Yeah, it's really great. Hey, Gary. <laughs> you want to be like to say hi. Oh, really, but hi. Hi. <laughs> How's it going? Anyway, so um, yeah, nobody else is hard. wearing clothes. This is uh, well, fair. Because they just came from Costco. Wow. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah. So, I mean, I'm really excited about it and be able to promote that. Oh, I did want to talk to you guys about the producing that I've been doing, right? Oh yeah, so absolutely. I produced um, a movie called Voyager 2150. It's a short film. It's a sci-fi. Mm -hmm. And it's been cleaning up in the film festival circuit, which I'm really grateful for. Um, and so the same uh, executive producer of that, we are now producing a horror film called um, Seance Games Matoksu. And I'm really excited to, to announce that. And that'll be where it's start, just starting in pre-production. And it's about a group of young TikTokers or social media stars, all of the above, that decide to do a seance. And because they're so famous and they have so many followers, they basically break the internet and uh, open the gates. Up. So we should awesome. be really, like, really that excited. Sounds, that yeah. sounds pretty now, cool. Are, are Leo's Leo, Leo's Leo geeking out right now. What? Are you gonna are you gonna grab real TikTokers for these for that? Well, one? that's that's why I, I don't. I'm not. I, it's okay to announce it because we're really looking for. I would love to have uh, TikTokers and big social media stars. But the question is honestly whether or not they can act. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, I mean, some of them really uh, well, can. I have my uh, eye on a few that I've been following. They don't know I'm following them. I'm stalking them like crazy, but- Hey, you're you know. like me, that's great. Uh, I am, I'm stalking- Well, if you need, need a really me. unpopular social media personality, that has no followers or anything on any social media <laughs> platform. I'm always available. Is that said true? You have you have followers. Look at you guys, and I love your, your opening and everything that you were doing. That's so. pretty crazy, huh? Ben and um, Jeff. That's actually Ben and Jeff. They they they. I don't know if you know much about Ben and Jeff, but like they're actually also jack of all trades. TV show, comic <laughs> books, animated series, all sorts of craziness. Like in, in this show. And this, oh yeah, podcast. I, I, could, I could, I could tell. You, I see Ben. You've got your um, the your the oh the back kind of like an old eight millimeter uh, image. Yeah. Uh, it's an eight millimeter, right? Yeah. Eight? yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, yeah. okay, okay, okay. We're gonna geek out for just a half a minute. All right. Absolutely. I am, um, I am a what's called a senior editor. So mm -hmm. I work for a whole bunch of companies. Mm -hmm. um, I do After Effects, Cinema 4D, nice. um, Adobe Premiere. Um, so Voyager 2150, I did all the editing and sound design and everything. So, um, and I worked for a bunch of companies over the years uh, as their main producer, director, editor. Right. Yeah. And a lot of that came from honestly um, working and trying to produce movies and productions like a long time ago and either not liking how the end came out, like the post-production mm -hmm. or running out of money and all of a sudden realizing now I've got to finish it. And it doesn't, you know, so I just decided, you know what, I'm going to learn how to edit, which I actually took on with, you know, Gusto and really learned mm -hmm. how to become a good editor. So, you know, I've edited a lot of shows and commercials and I've directed a bunch of stuff like that. And I think one of the things about that is that it's kept me working no matter what. Yep. As an actress, sometimes you get a part here, you get a part there. And for me as an actress, a lot of times I was getting roles that I didn't love anymore. And, you know. It was always like TNA, TNA, TNA. And hey, I have no problem with that. But <laughs> there's more to me. Do you know you'll what hear, I mean? You'll like, hear no complaints from this side of the gallery. <laughs> no, I mean, it's okay. To be, or, if, or even try to be as best as you can be or whatever. <laughs> but, you know, I have more that I can do. And I wanted to have an opportunity to produce the kind of projects that I would like to do. Um, right. 
And so, like, for example, uh, Seance Games. Uh, Incredible Hulk TV show. Yes. I love, yes. Well, Mellow goes back. <laughs> Thank you so much for commenting. Um, yeah, no, and it's really, as, as a director, because I direct quite a bit, um, as a director, being an editor, and I, for those of you who are editors, Leo. you know but when you're a really good editor, it really helps you as a director. Because especially if you're working on an extremely low budget, and mm. you're like, boom, I got this shot, boom, I got, okay, I just did an insert, I need this, I need this, I got it, let's move on. And I can do it, because as an editor, I can see it being cut in my mind, you know? Mm -hmm. And if I'm lucky enough to work with a good cinematographer, I work with, um, often with a cinematographer, a woman named Sandra Stenzel, and um, she's fantastic. Uh, very, very creative, um, artsy kind of uh, cinematographer. She has her vision of what she wants, and then we talk together and we can get it done. So, so. I know I've been talking a lot. You guys probably have questions, and I'm just uh, oh, no, oh. The, the whole see, we this, do, but like, this we is run, great. well, wait a minute now, Jeremy. We run the show totally unscripted, uh -huh. and basically, that's why we asked backstage, you know, key points we're going to touch on, but it's all about you. So for you to sit here and just and talk and tell story, I mean, that's what we enjoy and the viewers and listeners enjoy. So, well, I got stories. I got well, a lot yeah, of I, by I, all I, means. Before we get into too many stories, like oh, you said, commercial. you know, you've, that's coming. Yep, directed, uh, but not only actress, producer, director, editor, writer, singer, soundtracks, music departments, visual effects. I mean, when I said that this. Amazing guest wears animator. many hats. I, I know, right? Animator. You have an animator credit. I like, I did. That's probably not lower on my totem pole. That was like a necessity. <laughs> I, had to do it. I don't have that one yet. I, I, I was like, I had, no, I had to. It was to do with uh, Voyager 2150. I also did it on Rockstar, too. It's like, so you just right? get in there. And, yeah, I, and I was going to get into Rock. I was going to get into Rockstar. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Because that won a ton of awards. Yes, Rockstar um, did. After Leo. I need a mirror my camera, so I'm pointing in the wrong direction tonight. <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Uh, okay, so definitely check out our guest at LA Horror Con, October 1st and 2nd. There's still a ton of show left, uh, but we do have an awesome ad here, and hopefully I can hit the right button. Here we go. Thank you for supporting Actors and Others for Animals. We started a long, long time ago. So when you find an organization like Actors and Others for Animals, it sort of unites all of those of us who want to pay back something for all the joy we get out of animals. Please keep up the good work. Believe me, it's deeply appreciated. Okay, just... wow. I got to say something about that ad. That was Betty White. Yes, yes, it was. And I had the honor of working with her um, I don't know why I, I almost want to cry. Um, well, we all do. I mean, she was an amazing person. Yeah. Um, I produced a uh, documentary special for uh, Los Angeles Fox News, it's Los Fox News special called Love Betty White. And I, I was a producer, director, editor on that with um, uh, Carlos Amesqua. Sorry, my brain. Carlos Amesqua for uh, Fox News. Anyways, mm -hmm. to make a super long story short, she was so beautiful of a soul. I mean, just really kind, um, really great person. And because I was working a lot, doing a lot of those type of talking interview shows, yeah, and yeah. I also did a whole bunch of them for Los Angeles Magazine, like uh, so many, that sometimes you get celebrity guests and they're snarky or they're fine when the camera's rolling, but when the camera stops, they're kind of bah, 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 bah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's funny because since I grew up in the industry and my father was never like that, so when I run into somebody and they are that way, I'm like, oh, dude. But Betty White was literally royalty walking. Just an angel, so sweet, so kind. And a lot of things in that commercial about um, animals and things like that she talked about. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, I was honored with being able to edit and put together that whole program. It was beautiful. Love yep. Betty White. It's really good. Yeah, we, um, we were honored with that commercial um, from a PR firm that she was dealing with, uh, her and Loretta Swit and uh, a couple others. And it was actually the last commercial that she did before she passed. 
no. they weren't going to release it. And then the, the rest of them said, yes, let's release it. And we actually were the first ones to be able to get it. I don't know how, but he sent it to us and we've been running it all year. Oh, it's so great. He's a, yeah. good, a really good soul. Really good. Anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you but, know what? Because I'm back to promoting again. Okay. My book. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's okay. Book. Okay, okay, okay. Your book. My book. Okay. <laughs> it's called Rescue Heart because I am an animal lover myself. And it is about a uh, a native a beautiful Native American woman who is kind of messed up with this. Um, drug dealer guy in New Mexico, and he also likes to do cool dog fighting. And I don't want to give it, give it away too much, but right. basically she gets her strength to leave him, and she steals his dog to save his life, this this dog. And the whole movie and book is about her relationship with this fighting dog and the dog. Right. Like and like she's a female her John is, Wick. It's so good, and it's so sweet. But anyway, so I wrote the book and the screenplay during lockdown. I just was so determined to, I had this thought in my head. So, um, yeah. So the book was a bestseller on Amazon. Uh, you can make it another bestseller if you guys start oh, buying yeah. it. Oh, yeah. I was going to say that. You know. Start buying it again. Get those sales going. Um, yeah. And I hope I don't get in trouble for announcing this, but um, the film has been winning a lot of awards. And right now, um, James Brolin is set to direct. So oh. James Bolin is Josh Bolin's father, married to Barbara Streisand, blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. um, he, he loved the screenplay, and I thought he was great. He, in, and he's been directing a lot more now. And he's, anyways, to make a super long, long story short, that's the way it's supposed to go. Um, hope, just fingers crossed, everything goes through. Um, mm -hmm. The title might be changed. We're working on that. But one last little brag. Um, because I wrote the book and the screenplay, not only did I win awards as for it being a screenplay, but yeah. I won best adapted um, screenplay at the Burbank International Film Festival like a week, week, week and a half ago, weeks ago, something. So wow. I was really excited. That's so, amazing. So awesome. I'm That's a writer. Amazing. I'm a writer. <laughs> so, your, Leo. your husband must be wicked proud. I'm sorry. Like, yeah, he's you are. Right he's, no, he's bored with me. He's not bored. He's yeah, not well, bored. He's like, I'm just getting a beer. Leave me alone. It's amazing <laughs> stuff. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. As you can tell, he's like, he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, where can they find out about our amazing guest? Um, where can they find out about me? Wait a minute, Leo. Yeah, Leo yeah, has uh, a job. Leo has a job. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely check the show notes up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And also don't forget to check out LA horror con. If you're in the area, it is October 1st and 2nd. And along with our awesome guests here, so uh, the Amazon, I'm not sure if that's in the show notes, but get over to Amazon, buy yes. the book, buy, get over to Amazon, buy rescue heart, the book. Um, it's the screenplay is a little bit different than the book. I cannot tell a lie. There's a little change there in some of the storylines, but and watch Trance, my movie. Yes, okay. yes. We and, still have uh, some time. I was gonna, I was gonna hammer him with Trance again. Okay. <laughs> you, okay, you go, you go, you go. I have to say, like I was just talking to my kid early, one of my kids earlier today, how how it's so much more fun in. Uh, rewarding when a person is this passionate about their craft yep. like you are like just fire it's it's fantastic to see somebody this you're it's inspiring to see i to, appreciate that you know? I, I i to be honest rescue heart is the movie that i really want to see go whether i direct or james brolin directs that's what he does um because it's got a really lovely story about, you know, rescuing a lovely dog. That and and that's going to be a full-length feature? Feature film, yeah. Nice. Yes. That's we'll, fantastic. We'll like, to, that's we'll amazing. We'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll have to keep an well, eye on that. Well, maybe there's a part of me that's consistently trying to make my father proud. So I love you, Dad. Doug McClure. If, if he, he was proud of you when he was around, so I, I, he's just like, ecstatic now he's like hey take a break breathe a little <laughs> well she is she's like well, probably, right? oh yeah you're in hawaii <laughs> he's like you're in the hawaii and you're doing an interview like yeah i know it's okay um you know 
Yeah. That's what's blowing me away. I, if I was in Hawaii, I'd be like, yeah, I'm be like, sorry, I'm going to have to reschedule till this week when I'm home. No, it's okay because um, by the, we're, I'm here for 10 days and the Horicons October 1st and 2nd. So wanted to get that promotion in, and I really appreciate you guys quite a bit. So. Oh, no, no, we appreciate fun. you taking time out, coming out here. Um, yeah, I was just, I would, you know, go ahead. Uh, Romello. Oh, yes. My favorite role that I've done over the years. Um, well, actually, it's a little unusual. Um, I love playing um, the role in Woman Scorned 2. That was with Andrew Stevens and... Um, I did a lot of movies with Andrew Steve Stevens for his company, um, Shannon Tweed. There was, you guys know who Shannon Tweed is, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So she did quite a few and then she was deciding she didn't want to do them anymore. And they were actually looking for the next Shannon Tweed. And in that time period, um, you know, you had Basic Instinct, you had all those movies that were out and women were kind of pushing the boundary of being sexy and all that kind of stuff. And still, I didn't mind playing the sexy roles as long as the the movie itself had some meat to it and a, and a woman's born too really did but there's some nudity and stuff like that and so it's not for everybody um but i really like my performance because I feel like I so it was fun it was a complex circuit. other than that probably trance yeah. again trance on amazon yeah. trance on amazon. yeah and then after that buy the book on Amazon, Rescue Heart. Well, wait, and then, you know, well, you, actually, my album isn't, you can't really buy it anymore. You submit it. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, do, right. you, do you have it on Spotify? Yeah, it's on, um, no, it's not on, it's on SoundCloud. So it's on oh, SoundCloud. okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> so there you go. We're good. Like Holy that? moly. <laughs> <laughs> so but, just, just to back up uh, just a minute, just to geek out just for a quick oh, second. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I, I know you you said uh, After Effects uh, and, and Adobe, uh, but some people use both. I know I use both myself. Uh, Final Cut or Premiere? I'm um, I'm OK. I actually edited on Final Cut for for quite a few years because I work for a company called All Media Services and they have wanted everybody on 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 Final Cut. I believe I edited is that Final Cut. I think the Betty White show and a bunch of those were all final cut. Um, <clears throat> but once I switched to Adobe Premiere, oh, I, I, I really prefer Adobe Premiere quite a bit. Um, and all the different tools that kind of commingle with After Effects and whatnot. Um, and, you know, they're, also their sound design software isn't bad either. You know, I mean, yeah. it, it really is a good suite. I mean, it really is a good creative suite, hence the name. So, um, yeah. And then... Um, I don't know. I, when I want to do something, I put my mind to it. And if I don't know how to do it, I just like Google it. <laughs> <laughs> right. it. It's Google probably it. on YouTube. <laughs> so if you're a who, who's, who's the editors of you guys? All of you? Me. Okay. Do you ever like I do dabble, something? But not. And then all you know you know how to do it. You'll appreciate this. And all of a sudden, like, however time goes on, all of a sudden somebody gives you a job and it's like, oh yeah, you know, do a four camera, you know, live edit. You're like, yeah. Oh, how do I do this four camera thing again? Do you ever done it? He's like, no, yeah. I know how to do it all the time. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, oh my God, where's that button? <laughs> you should see us every time we're trying to set up the live camera. Yeah, it's like, where's that button? <laughs> no, I mean, sometimes That's my brain, my good you know, inside my, joke, huh, Ben? <laughs> my producing yeah. partner, uh, Sandy Stenzel, um, when we took on the job of doing Voyager 2150, there's a, okay, now if you have a minute to hear the geek part, Oh, yeah. um, we knew oh, it. Oh, yeah. I wrote the script. It's a short film. It's 20 minutes, but it's really good. And if, if you're into that kind of art, artsy kind of wacky 2001 space odyssey thing, but a whole bunch of times the spaceship is in, in the storyline, you know, cruising through and doing this and all that. And my production partner, Sandra Sandler, goes, you put a spaceship in the movie. Why does it have to have a spaceship? I go, because it's it's about space. It's got to have a spaceship. She goes, where are we going to have a spaceship? And I go, yeah, I'm going to make one. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, nuts. And I'll tell you that the insider, true, true, true story. So um, before we actually shot principal photography of Voyager 2150, we were obviously planning on all the special effects and the animation, everything that we were going to do. And I already know uh, Adobe Premiere and all that kind of stuff. 
And so I was looking into hiring somebody else to make a spaceship and then, or, or buying one that was already made. I'm, this is 3D, 3D, right? It's not, well, we had an actual set that was a spaceship and then, you know, uh, the, everything else is, is 3D animation. Every one of the animators that we interviewed or we looked at their work for what we could afford, this is a very important part. Mm -hmm. It looked so fake and so cheesy and so not, and I learned later it's, you know, how complex, blah, blah, blah. So um, the cheat that I'll admit is what we decided to do was buy a, buy a wireframed already, you know, built um, on Cinema, Cinema 4D. And it was just this big ship, but it was made, it was complicated, right? And I basically customized it. I learned how to do it, um, reskinned it, pulled the nose out, did the this, the wings, and made everything move. So when I say I, I, I didn't make it from scratch, but I did, you know, from that point. Then I had to learn how to move it on screen and how to you know, composite it in. So it was a lot of work to do, but I enjoyed it. So I'm just sharing that with you guys because you edit. Yeah. Everybody yeah. else is probably bored. Well, that, that's, 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 that's just, not, no, that's not like it. You it, probably it, got all our nerds going, oh my God. Right. No, it was Beautiful great. and nose nerd stuff. No, it was great. It was great. <laughs> Get her done, you know what I mean? It was, well, it, it, it was right. it's not It's not really a cheat, you know? It's, uh, you know, every, you know, like, uh, I mean, you always pull something from something else, you know, whether it's right. a, I mean, like a template how could, or... I, how could I have built the whole thing? That would be like a special, we would have any film production, we would have hired somebody, but it was helpful for our budget because our budget was small to, for them to get, I, I bought it and then I, I customized it and manipulated yeah. it, you know? And that was, mm -hmm. a, that was took a little bit of art as well. You don't, you don't think about it until you actually, and oh, by the way, Voyager twenty one fifty, I I believe is going to be available on Amazon before the end of the year. It's it's, it's an art film, so you know, art film, sci fi, yeah. two thousand one space odyssey thing. But it's to get a spaceship to land. You know, you think, oh, I'll just okay, I'll drag it, and it's going to go like this. It looks so fake. You have to literally make it for me. Yep. You know what I'm you know what I'm talking I'm, about. And mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, now it's landing. Oh, that looks so fake. Why does it look fake? Where's the dust? Where's the, you know, where's all the this? And I'm like, oh God. Then I got into a Adobe <laughs> premiere and fixed it there. It was like, oh Lord. But it was it was fun, you know? And our next film. Uh, it's so, great to see that you cared enough about all that little detail. The details. Well, like the dust uh, coming up and the shadowing. To, and... Actually, too bad I, um, I, I didn't give you guys. That's probably um, why all these things are winning awards. Like, you, well, you understand just, that you, we, we you work care. Hard. Yeah, we work hard and we went, we did Voyager 2150, to be totally honest, with the purpose of trying to get it to win some awards. We had a dual right. purpose going. One, I'm trying to show that I can do this as a producer, director, editor, and show that I have a team that can, that can work really well together at an ultra low budget, that part of it. And then also the executive producer, Nisha Patron, was all about her music. She has an album that was coming out and it's her song, um, beautiful song and the whole the whole short film is based around what that song means and you'd have to see it but um it's basically about the voyager one the spaceship that is an, a real spaceship in nasa right now mm -hmm. that was sent out in 1977 and on that craft on a ship it's a craft there was a gold record you can google this and there um all kinds of music from earth was put on the gold record and the reason for it was we believe that it would be a source of communication to any potential aliens in the universe. 1977, NASA. Mm -hmm. Here's the best news of all, to all geeky people that like that kind of stuff. You can Google it, and the Voyager 1, there's actually two of them, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2, is still out in space, and it's still sending back information to NASA yeah. oh. since 1977. So uh, the, well, the movie Voyager 2150 was... It's the year 2150, and a Gantarian <laughs> finds, recovers the remnants of the spaceship, finds the gold record, and plays it, and discovers music for the first time. And the rest is That's so awesome. She, yeah. What were you going to say, Leo? She's what? Oh, I don't Which, remember. Oh, I thought Leo, <laughs> Leo was going to, I think, because Leo kind of went like this. I thought he had something he wanted. No, I, 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 yeah, no, uh, Brownie. <laughs> <laughs> Squirrel. Wait, wait, Leo. What kind of brownie? 
Yeah. Oh my God. I, I, as I'm a farmer, I share with all my friends. A hey, farmer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are we farming? Oh, it's legal here in Massachusetts. I it's think legal, it's legal, legal there in Hawaii. It's legal yeah. everywhere, pretty much. Almost, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. there's only like 13 states left or something like that. <laughs> something yeah. like that. They'll get okay, it. I feel like I talk too much, so I, I, no. I, I, I you're doing you know everybody's right. geeking out it's, i got a question go yes what do you it. miss most about the 80s the music did that come out too fast too loud <laughs> <laughs> 80s music there's right. some really good rock and roll from the 80s and i'm not wow. talking like myself i mean you know what i'm talking about mm -hmm. good old no. rock. you know i miss yeah. that yeah. Yeah. real uh, music well and it really you know that music back then was so telling you know if you're having a movie or you know something of that era you don't include it you know there's just something wrong like uh the new quantum leap just uh dropped and uh did you know about that leo i just found out about it <laughs> uh <laughs> nobody told you huh yeah i know <laughs> uh, apparently they told me like a month ago and i forgot uh, too many brownies. <laughs> I love the original Quantum Leap. How yes. awesome. anybody know? Uh, the new one's really good, but they drop uh, he his first leap is in the uh, in the eighties. Yeah, and you know as soon as he's there, they uh, they have uh, just a song kick in, and it's just like totally eighties. You know, it's just oh wow. Yeah. Well, well I was thinking, Tani, if the, if you could do this, I you must know people. But Netflix has this show called uh, uh, Stranger Things, and this this season they hooked up with Kate Bush, and, and like I have to tell you, it would be awesome. You have a that your '80s self titled. It, it's like the '80s like rock music. It, it's like your voice, the the sound, everything. It it, it just works so well. I think I it would be that. a great thing. You you got to hook up with the, uh, uh, some uh, people over there at the Netflix and be like, Stranger Things, you guys think of me. Think of me. Well, you want to know something? Uh, my daughter, um, Kayla McClure Arntz, um, she's, <laughs> she's in production and she works for a company that actually does uh, producing. She posts on Stranger Things. So, you know. Oh. Well, I should just ask Look my daughter. You. <laughs> yeah. Right. Be like, we're the 80s. Like, come on. Come on, then. Yeah. <laughs> Hook mama <Yeah>. up. <laughs> yeah. Right? right? And if, if that don't work, we do know Andre Ivchenko. Ivchenko. <laughs> Ivchenko. He's one of my he played the uh, He played the Russian Terminator in season three. And we just had Christian Garnier on, who plays 10 um, in the new season. That's awesome. So... That's awesome. We'll, awesome. We'll, we'll make, I was gonna say we'll make some calls, but we'll make some emails. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> want to want to yeah. hear what I did with Andre? Really geeked out moment. I, yes, I got him to to play uh, opposite of me. Uh, I was Count Rugen from Princess Bride, and he played uh, Inigo Montoya. And we did the the kill the scene where he kills Count Rugen at the end. Oh, it was so awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was, was that great. was that was pretty good. That was pretty good. I, I, I got to good. dork the but, hell out. <laughs> but but we're here to talk about. Oh yeah. Funny. Uh, hey, did you know she's got a book out called Rescue <laughs> Heart on wait, Amazon? Wait, uh, let's do our list. Uh, oh, no, oh, we got trance. No, oh. Ramel is asking me how did I oh, get? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, he stole that one from me because I mentioned it backstage. But go okay, ahead. So I'll let him have the thumb Red up. Carr was my um, manager at the time. I wish he still was. He's a great guy. Um, and he was music, not only was managing my singing career, but he was doing a lot of music coordinating for movies. Oh, this is actually a really good story. How much time do we have? This is a, As I'll much as you it. want. Well, I should probably get going with the family. We're in but the I yeah, yeah. We, we, we have about good. nine minutes to the show. Okay. But this is a good story. Okay. So he said to me, look, I've got this movie and your music is really great for it. You wrote the song, you got, you, uh, got me burning, burning the third degree, blah, 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 and photo play. And another one. He says that, that they really like, and it would be really great for this movie called Terminator. And I went, huh, okay. And who's it starring? Arnold Schwarzenegger. And, like, and who's it? <laughs> James Brolin. Did I say James Brolin? He's not on my no. mind. <laughs> James Cameron. 
And I'm like, and so I say, okay, fine. You know, remember now I was young and being silly. Yeah, yeah. So I say, okay, you know, take the music, blah, blah, blah. So I went to the first screening of the movie before it actually, my music was actually in it. And they hadn't done all the finishing. They hadn't done anything like that. And um, Linda Hamilton's there. I get all these names right. Um, the other, the actor, blah, blah, blah. James Cameron, and we're watching a small screening, and it's a lot of the special effects and animation, 3D animation isn't complete. So it looks kind of strange, and, this, and the soundtrack isn't there, and all this, all the SFX. <clears throat> and I'm looking at it, and I walk out, and Bud goes, what did you think, what did you think? And I go, I'm sorry, that was the worst movie I've ever seen in my whole life. And he goes, oh my God, you just shut up. And I'm like, okay, I'm not saying it out loud. So, <laughs> you know where this is going, right? So. I don't know how many months down the road, maybe nine miles, a while, I got invited to the big red carpet premiere. So I go, you know, I go and I see this movie and I have never been more embarrassed of my idiot idiotness in my life. It was so dang good. And when Terminator first came out in its time, so good. And um, just the sound effects was thrilling and everything looked so good. And I, I think... In, a, in many ways, at that point, I realized how much post-production can do for a movie. Of course, the performances were all good. Of course, they were. But the sound effects, the layers, everything. It was, and the, oh, my God. Just adding so, music to a scene yes. changed the oh, whole feel Cord, of it. Cordy and uh, Brad Fidel and his beautiful soundtrack. Yes, absolutely fantastic. I literally was like, hmm. And my man manager was like, Bud Carr's like, told you. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> so anyways, you know, I was nice about it. I was never rude, but just goes to show how naive we can be and we don't know. So when I'm actually working on a film that I'm producing and directing and I actually will send to the client um, a rough cut. Oh my God, you should see all my layers of, of my email layers of just like, okay, this is just rough. It won't look like this. It's going to look much better than that. <laughs> and nine times out of 10, they still go, yeah, but you know when she goes like this, there's nothing in her hand. <laughs> and I'm like, well, no shit. It will be there. <laughs> you know. What I, I won't forget it. I promise. <laughs> so again, uh, how October first oh, and second, October first yeah, and second, LA Horrorcon. Well, LA Horrorcon. I will be there in person, um, amongst all these. I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy celebrities. But please come and see me. I would really. Anybody who's going to watch this either now or in the future, please, I'm asking you to come. All. Horror, horror fans are some of the, the greatest kind of... Uh, I've only done two horror cons at this point. I'm a, I'm a huge comic book nerd. <laughs> and holy crap, horror fans have... They're like so welcoming. They're, they are like the nicest people. Yeah, uh, I, I was did, not expecting that. I did the Hollywood show a couple months back. And I was shocked to have um, fans coming in with giant posters of my movie Crawl Space with Klaus Kinski. And I did that when I was really young. I was like, does anybody even remember that? But yeah. they're, really, they're really into, you know, that. He, I mean, Klaus Kinski, you know, very well known. You know, he's, right. you know, he's, uh, he's passed away, but he's quite the character. And I, I signed so many big posters. I was in shock. So was really well, these crazy. guys are... are... Yeah, you, you, you're probably going to, you could do the core cons for the rest of your life and not have to worry about writing books, movies, producing, oh animation, God. anything else. And you could just tell you, but like, we're happy that you're doing everything else. What are you, what are you trying to fancy. say? We should, we should try to get her on the East Coast into our horror con. That would be great. I'd come. So that, I, you let, can, so that you can actually interview her in person is that oh what my you god want, are Jeremy? you serious oh, <laughs> would you let me <laughs> would you allow me to do a panel with you tony like of course. I, I swear i would make you laugh and and it would be so much fun and we would do a scene out of hold on I, oh i know we'll do a scene out of king kong uh, i'll be king kong and you'll be my jane and i'll be like holding you up well, not really but <laughs> 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 Oh, All righty then. So, <laughs> LA Horror Con, October 1st and 2nd. Check out her movie on Amazon, which is Trance. Trance. I was just waiting yeah, to see Trance. if anybody else would jump in. Leo, he's just like, ooh. 
No, I've, I've written, <laughs> even during the interview, guys, I was sitting writing down stuff. Like I got to send you the trailer of Trance and Voyager 2150. Oh, yeah, that would have been great. To, to, absolutely. We could have shown absolutely. that during the, the, the know, show. Ah, oh, damn you, Tani. But that's okay because we Get can still work. We can still show it. It doesn't. Can I send it to you? Yeah, Anyways. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send you. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, okay. Her book it, is on Amazon as well. You yeah. So head Rescue over there. Heart. Thank get you. Down. See, see, I'm just I'm. Don't and if anybody uh, curious to see what I'm doing, it's mostly all producer stuff, but sometimes personal things there. My website is McClurefilms.com. M C C L U R E F I L M S dot com. McClurefilms dot com. I but believe I that is in the show notes. There you go. Yep. I believe I already found that link, right. folks, and it's in the there. show notes. Leo, where there. are the show notes? There. Up above or down below, depending on where you're watching or listening to us. And uh, on that, I want to thank everybody for watching this fine evening. Uh, you know, uh, for me, just Google Leo Pond. You find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which. But I run the Dorkening Podcast ne Network. A ton of pe awesome people doing a ton of awesome stuff. Head on over to thedorkening.com for more information. And, uh, uh, Tony, where do you like people interacting with you on social media? Uh, well, um, you can find me on Instagram. That's one of the best ways, at Tony McClure. And I don't think you go to Smart. Uh, if, um, <laughs> Facebook is McClure Phones. Awesome. But, but I say Instagram. Oh, I'm on the... Nah. Just do Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. And I believe we have all those in the show notes. Uh, yes, we do. Senior Jar Jar. All right. You can find me at uh, Comic Book Lovers Buy, Sell, Trade, and Auction on the Facebooks. And then uh, if you're looking to start your own poll for your comic book collection, check out Box of Comics with an X. My homie Chris Mitchell will hook you up. Oh, means. Yeah. Benjamin. Yes. Hi. Oh, hi. How are you? So, uh, yeah, for us, just go, go to stilltoking.com. You'll find out everything you want to know, everything from the comic books to the novel to the TV series to the cartoon series to this series. Um, yeah, it's all there. It is. But to, uh, to all our veterans and first responders, we want to thank you for doing what you do every day so people like us can do what we do. Uh, Tawny, hang tight while we close up the show, if you don't mind. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. We're out of here. Deuces. Bye. Thanks, you guys. Thank you so much. Or tune in in uh, like an hour for the door coming. Oh, that's right. Oh, so yeah, that's I'm true. so sorry. Leo, you have another show tonight, don't you? I do, I do, I do. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be talking about Quantum Leap and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Ooh, yeah. I'm heading back to Trim Jail myself. <sighs> Okay, now you have to explain that because right, I'm saying that. It's just, I, I, yeah, it didn't it's sound right. Harvest season. I'm stuck in trim jail. I have to trim all that wonderful product into wonderful products so it's usable. There you go. Yes. <laughs> he has to make his medication. Yeah, there we go. I, I'm fully medicated. <laughs> <laughs>